STM32F407G Disk 1 board key features. So, in this course, we're going to use STM32F407G Disk 1 board. So, here is the data brief about the board. So, the STM32 F1 disk discovery board. So, this has a lot of features, and I did some amount of research to find out okay, this would be the best fit for our tutorials or course. So some of the features that it has is it hosts STM32F407VGT6 microcontroller. So this microcontroller features a 32-bit ARM Cortex-M4 with a PFPU core. So one megabyte flash memory and then 192 kilobytes of RAM in an LQFP 100 package. So this has, if you see this microcontroller, this is 100 pin LQFP package. So the USB, it supports OTG FS. Also it has ST MEMS 3 axis accelerometer. So if you want to work with the accelerometer, we can work. So then it has ST MEMS audio sense, omnidirectional digital microphone. So it has inbuilt microphone with it. Audio AD audio DAC with integrated class D speaker driver. So it is very good for let's say if you want to develop audio applications. User and reset push buttons. It has two push buttons. Then it has eight LEDs, so LD1 red or green for USB communication. So this basically indicates whether the communication is okay. Then LD2, it is for 3.3 volts power on. The one important thing is that it, it has four user LEDs, D3, D4, D5, and D6. These are the things which we can use for, so which we can use for uh, like blinking an LED or designing some patterns to basically to get acquainted with the GPIO programming and, and LED programming, so LED blinking. So that's the, the main use case. And it has two USB OTG LEDs, like LD7 and LD8. This basically to indicate that OTG is working. So when there is a data transfer, you'll see that LEDs blink. Then you have board connectors. So it comes with the USB with micro AB. Then you have stereo headphone output jack. So this is a USB and then this is a microphone jack. And the 2.5 mm pitch extension header for all LQFP 100 IOs for a quick connection to prototyping board and easy probing. So you see this on the left and the right side. You see that there are pin headers, so which we can use. Uh, let's say if you have an external module, you can interface with this pin headers. You can connect that external board to this. Then flexible power supply options. So it has ST-Link, USB, VBUS or external source. So it gets powered via the USB. So that's the understanding. Then it has external application power supply, 3.3 volt and 5 volts. So you can externally apply power to this. Then comprehensive free software, including a variety of examples, part of STM32 Cube F4 MCU package, or STSW STM32068 for using legacy standard libraries. So in this course, we're going to use the STM32 Cube IDE. So when you work with this Cube IDE, you can easily understand. Uh, the variety of software uh, drivers which already provides so which is already present in in the stm32 cube ide which will uh, very which will help us to build the applications very easily so we don't have to do everything from scratch and it has onboard st link slash v2a debugger or programmer with USB 
re-enumeration capability that means mass storage virtual com port and debug port so one of the main advantage of this board is that it has inbuilt debugger so you don't have to buy another debugger to work with this board to flash and debug the code so that's very very useful so this supports a wide choice of integrated development environments like IDEs, including IAR, Embed Workbench, MDK ARM, and STM32 Cube ID. So these are different IDs that it supports. So we will use STM32 Cube ID in this course or series of tutorials. So well, this is about the board. So let's get a little bit more insight into this controller. So if you look at the, the features that STM32F407 VGT6 microcontroller has, this is the controller, this is present on the, the disk one board, just now we talked about. Here are the key features of STM32F407 VG microcontroller. So it has ARM Codex M4 CPU, which can clock up to 168 megahertz it has a floating point unit it has the tested vector interrupt controller so it supports jdag software debug or etm it also has a memory protection unit then it has different buses the multi ahp bus matrix so this kind of supports 16 channel dme with the batch acquisition mode bam the true random generator the trng it has up to one megabytes of flash memory up to 192 kilobytes of sram so fsmc or sram nor nand fc so these all can be used so all of this can be parallel interfaced so it has that capability then 80 byte plus four kilobyte backup sram so this is with respect to the main features and then we come to connectivity so it has a camera interface it has three spis two i2c's sorry two i2s and three i2c uh, channels that it supports you also have ethernet which uh, mac with 10 bar 100 with ieee 1588 it means it supports ethernet it has uh, two can channels then stivo it has it has usb 2.0 otg support usb otg so it has two usb ports it has six uart the lin smart card irda the modem control so it provides a lot of connectivity so in future if you want to interface any of this you can directly use our board uh, you can use this discovery board and then do your development or experiments so it also has a chan support for analog so it has two channels two analog channels for 80 8, 12 bit DAC so we'll get into ADCs and DACs in the future so three 12 bit ADC it has and it also has inbuilt temperature sensor then the control in terms of control, it has a 10 16 bit timer and two 16 bit motor control PWM synchronized AC timer and then two 32 bit timer. So, this is about the timer control module inside that. With respect to the system, so it has a 1.2 volt internal regulator. So, it has internal reg power regulator to provide 1.2 volt to its core. So then it has Excel oscillators, so 32 kilohertz, so which can clock up to 26, which you can also connect 4 to 26 megahertz. This internal RC oscillator, which supports like 32 kilohertz plus 16 megahertz. So it has a PLL support. Then you have a clock control, RTC, SysTick timer, two watchdogs. So it works on independent mode and the window mode. So it has a 51, 82, 144, 140. These are the different IOs that it has, number of IO pins. And the cyclic redundancy check. So it also supports the CRC. 
So this is the brief uh, features that you have. So in this course, we will build the projects and learn how to program the microcontroller to use these features effectively for our use case and for our learning. Well, that's all for this video. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to the channel for more projects, courses, tutorials, and tools.